All right, welcome back to Pharmacist on Call. Your host, Dr. Sean Pruitt. Your doctors are busy, your pharmacists are busy. They don't have time for this hour. I do, so call in with those questions and those comments. We're gonna get right back into your calls. We've got Margie on line one. Margie, welcome to Pharmacist on Call. How may we help you? I would like to know if I can have your pharmacy number that you work at, I'd like to talk with you personally. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's 562-MEDS or 562-6337. Uh, the producer is going to flash, well, yeah, there it is right there. And she's also going to flash it at the end of the show. Uh, so feel free to give us a call. Our business hours are 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, we open a little late from noon to six. Saturday, we're closed. And then on Sunday, we are open 12 to four. So you can give us a call after 9 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. I I enjoy your show, but this is something real personal. Okay, that's fine, man. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. All righty, bye. All right, moving on. We've got Dot on line two. Dot, welcome to Pharmacist on Call. Hello, thank you for taking my call. Yes, I'd like to know if it's all right to take uh, Trazodone, uh, 50 milligram, along with Cymbalta. It's been prescribed together, but I don't know if it's okay or not. I will have to research that. Uh, let's see. I'm Be afraid of the syndrome. Yeah, the serotonin syndrome. Yeah, absolutely. But Trazodone is generally taken at night and affects your norepinephrine. Uh, and then, of course, Cymbalta is a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which would generally be taken during the day. Give me a call to the store. Let me research that. What milligram of Cymbalta are you on? Okay, uh, Cymbalta 60. Yeah, it's high dose there. And I was taking two, but I've cut myself down to one. Okay. I think that was a high dose. Okay. It, two sixties would be a high dose, wouldn't it? Yes, ma'am, it would be. Okay. And uh, will you forever, does one forever have to take Cymbalta or and something to sleep? No, ma'am. No, ma'am, you don't. Uh, so what I recommend uh, as an alternative is uh, GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, which is gamma amino butyric acid. Okay, I know what that is. Mm -hmm, yeah, so it's something that we were we were enabled with. In fact, I had a, a lady call me today saying that it, it helped her. And she was wondering if she could take it with her uh, our appraisal lamp, but she's been sleeping pretty well on it. But she also noticed that it lowered her blood pressure. Uh, so, no, you don't have to stay on the uh, Cymbalta or the Trazodone. But well, I had taken Xanax for years. And uh, thank goodness I've been off of them uh, at a year and 10 months. Okay. All right, good. But no, ma'am, you don't have to stay on those. Okay, thank you so much. And I'll call you at, the, at your pharmacy. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you for your call. Thank you. Uh, all right. All right, line three, we've got Claude. Claude, welcome to Pharmacist on Call. How may we help you? Well, I really enjoy your show. And I'm looking to find something that will dissolve kidney stones or, and keep them from forming. Hmm. What I would probably suggest is getting a steady dose of alkaline water. So let me ask you, uh, how much water are you getting? Well, it's not for me. It's a friend of mine. Okay. And I don't think they are on alkaline water. Okay. Do they have a diet high in red meat and do they love them some sodas? No, they've had them for a long time and for years, and they have uh, got themselves off of about everything that uh, people have recommended to get off of okay. to keep them from forming, but they are still forming. Yeah, I would try to alkalinize the blood. They're basically acid crystals, and so if you begin to alkalinize the blood, alkalinize the urine, uh, that should prevent those acidic stones from even forming. Well, that sounds fantastic. Yes, sir. So I would recommend, uh, if you're in the Nashville area, uh, alkaline water. Just And depending on their weight, uh, I always recommend drinking, uh, for every half pound of body weight, one ounce. So if they're a 100-pound person, they should be drinking 50 ounces, which would be about a liter and a half a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just ask them if they can call the store. I can probably direct them to a store that's near you if you're in Kentucky or West Tennessee or what have you. Okay, what... Uh 
number would they want to get? You know, the eight or nine or ten or eleven? What would that be? With stone formation, I would do nine point five. I would go for the gusto, and that's generally what I recommend for most patients, unless they tell me, "Hey, this is really strong, and I'm doing number two a lot," which you're gonna do on the alkaline water because it's gonna kill the bacteria in your gut. It's gonna flush it on out of there. But not everybody can tolerate that. But I, for your friend's situation, nine point five, since they are actively forming acidic crystals. Okay, I sure appreciate that. We'll give it a try. Sir, I appreciate your call. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, looks like on line four, we've got Lily. Lily, welcome to Pharmacist on Call. How may I help you? Hi, how you doing today, sir? I'm no, pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Um, I'd like to know what the difference between Lyrica and Galvapen and which one is best to take. Uh, what was the first one? Lyrica and Galvapen. Okay, so I'm assuming that you have neuropathy? Yes. Okay. Well, Lyrica is in the in the Valium family. I think the, the chemical name is pregabalin, uh, but it is uh, it's kind of in the benzodiazepine family like Valium and Xanax and all that stuff. Uh, gabapentin is uh, actually a brand name, Neurontin, is actually started out as an anti-seizure medication. Uh, they're going to be different in terms of the side effects that you can tolerate. Uh, Many people, well, it kind of, it depends on you. So I hear some people say that I can't tolerate the Lyrica, which you're gonna probably be a little bit drowsy, and you're gonna have some more psychiatric side effects, including weird thoughts, weird dreams, uh, but you also get marked drowsiness from the gabapentin. So it's gonna be trial and error to find out which one works the best for you in terms of that neuropathy. Now, is your neuropathy coming from a back injury or from uncontrolled diabetes? From a spinal tap. Oh, spinal tap, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you taken both? Um, yes, I'm, I'm trying to milk it now. Okay, okay. Yeah, and it's the more expensive drug, so your insurance company is probably going to take you through hoops uh, by having to get a prior authorization, and it's simply because uh, there's a cheaper alternative, or less expensive alternative, in gabapentin out there uh, before you move up to the more expensive Lyrica. But gabapentin works good in a number of patients, so it just depends on... It depends on you, on your makeup, which one you'll be able to deal with best. So what dose were you on on gabapentin before you had to move to Lyrica? Uh, I think it was 900. 900? Well, yeah, you had maxed out pretty much, so. Yeah. 900 per day? Oh, uh, yes. Nah. That's baby dose. So your doctor can go up to 800 probably three times a day, so that's going to be, what, 2,400 milligrams. So, yeah. It was 900 three times a day. 900 three times a day is, yeah, that's a for real dose. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so then I would think Lyrica would be uh, something that you would want to try. What milligram are they starting you on? 50. 50? Okay, yeah, Lyrica goes up to, I think, 300 milligrams, so you have some room to play with. Uh, have you started taking that? Yes. Lyrica, uh, are you feeling any different in terms of your mood or anything like that? Not yet. I have Okay, is it helping the neuropathy? Yes. Okay. Well, then that's good, especially at such a low dose. So that's very promising. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the alkaline water, uh, I can take that with that? Is it the Lyrica? Uh, yeah, but again, I recommend a pH of 7.0. Now, you can do the 9.5 just for your general health, but when you get ready to take your medication, make sure you get the 7.0 water so that you can fully absorb the Lyrica. Okay, and, and it would uh, take some of the, the inflammation out of my body? Yeah, yes. Well, not the 7.0, the one you take with your, your medication, but the 9.5, yes, it will. Okay. Mm -hmm. and so I just thought I'd have a lower level of 7.0 and then move up. Well, no, you can, you can get both because okay. 7.0 is not really alkaline. It's, it's chlorine and fluoride free. You start moving up into alkalinity once you get around... You know, the 8 range, 8.5. That's what we call our alkaline waters. But this is just a clean, it's what, that's, that's actually what we call it, clean water. So it's free of all the contaminants, but it leaves you some stomach acid so you can break your medicine down. So you'll need both. One gallon of 9.5, one gallon of 7.0. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Poole. I appreciate your help. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you for your call. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, looks like on line five we've got Jan. Welcome to Pharmacist on Call. How may we help you? Yes, I wanted to know if you could eat, uh, you know, like pickle beets and get a benefit or if they were good for you. 
Pickled beets, I'm sure that there is some, but gee, I'm thinking the pickling process is gonna really acidify it, uh, but beets are really kind of acidic themselves. Um, in terms of it being as effective as the beetroot juice, I couldn't sign off on that. I know that this is effective, and it's more so the root of the beet, you know, and the beet itself. So it's taking the whole plant, or vegetable, as it were. Hello, ma'am? Okay, I'm sure there's a benefit to it, but would you get the same benefit as you would the beetroot juice? I, I could not guess. But you could eat them if you wanted to and drink the juice too. Yes, ma'am, you absolutely could. Oh yeah, no, you, if you're worried about o ODing on beet juice, no ma'am. Yeah, you'll be okay, that is safe. Okay, well thank you. Yes, ma'am, you're welcome. All right, looks like on line six, we have Jay. Jay, welcome to Farmer Stone Call. I mean, we help you. Jay, welcome to Pharmacist on Call. How may we help you? Yes, yeah, thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I've got a question. I suffer from a high of hernia, and um, I was just wondering. I, I don't drink caffeine at all. I've done away with that. But uh, I just wonder if there's any good over-the-counter meds that you might uh, prescribe or, you know, even your water you talk about. And uh, if you could give me some information, I'll hang up and listen. I appreciate it. Sure. OTC, uh-uh, I don't have any information on that. Uh, you may want to go with the water and maybe something uh, anti-inflammatory like turmeric, T-U-R-M-E-R-I-C, uh, which is essentially the, uh, the curry spice, uh, but yeah, and certainly the water as well, which is um, different, a different sort of anti-inflammatory uh, to help decrease the inflammation, but that's the route I would go. But in terms of over-the-counter, that would match the relief that you get from a um, prescription pain pill per se? Uh, no, sir. There's nothing over the counter like that. All right, looks like we got Jocelyn on line one. Jocelyn, welcome to Pharmacy Stone Call. How may we help you? Hi, doctor, could you tell me what causes H. pylori and is there a um, treatment for that? Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, and I'll just hang up here and answer your question. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, H. pylori is Helicobacter pylori, and it's one of uh, a couple or two or three bacteria uh, that invade the gut. So what happens is an overgrowth of it can cause ulcers. So is there a treatment for it? Yes, there's actually a specific regimen that we use. Uh, it's like a 14-day course of, of three medications. Uh, it is, uh, let's see, amoxicillin. We've got, you could do uh, either Prilosec, which is one of your H2 blockers, or ranitidine, and that along with a metronidazole. So it'd be two antibiotics and something to help with the stomach acid. And you take those two to three times daily for a 14 day course, and that would kill off the H. pylori, which the te technical name again is Helicobacter pylori. Um, so that is a, a bacteria that invades the gut, causes stomach ulcers. So that is the short and skinny of it. All right, line two. Welcome to Pharmacist Stone Call. How may we help you? Hello? Yes, ma'am. May I help you? Uh, yes, I'd first like to say thank you very much for the service you're providing, um, Nashville. You're welcome. My question is, um, I've recently been placed on Crestor. Yes, ma'am. Is there another drug other than Crestor that will not cause the um, joint pain? I am taking glucosamine. Okay, okay. All right, I will answer your question and hang up here. Thank you for your call, ma'am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate answer is no. Uh, Crestor is in the family of uh, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. So this is a class of cholesterol medications. So there's Crestor, there is Lipitor, which is a torvastatin, there is Pravastatin, uh, which is Pravacol, Mevacor, which is Lovastatin, uh, Simvastatin, which is Zocor, they all have this same side effect. The side effect is called rhabdomyolysis, and so it, it uh, is basically a breakdown of muscle tissue, and it is very painful and can be fatal. Uh, so what we recommend in terms of screening to make sure that you're not at risk for rhabdomyolysis is your doctor should be monitoring your liver enzymes uh, every three months. So that's your, your serum transaminases, your AST and your ALT, to make sure that they are within normal ranges. If they're out of whack, and the doctor's gonna have to uh, discontinue that therapy. Uh, now there is an herb that the body converts into one of these drugs, it's called red yeast rice. 
Uh, and now it is an, a natural alternative, but again, it converts itself to, I believe it's lovastatin, uh, once the liver gets it and converts it into one of these HMG CoA reductase inhibitors. But if you're experiencing that, ma'am, make sure that your liver levels, your hepatic enzymes have been drawn and that they are within safe levels because it's probably going to have to either take you off Crestor or, or back down on the dose some. And if you want to look at something natural for your cholesterol, uh, look at Garcinia cambogia, which is, uh, you know, big weight loss thing that I talk to people. It blocks the absorption of fat in the bloodstream and the cholesterol and all that. And uh, certainly no side effects like rhabdo. So look at that. And um, those of you on cholesterol medications, research Garcinia cambogia and, uh, and look at its effects. Uh, but look, hey, we are up on a break. You all are calling in like like no other. So you're making this the number one call in show. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break.